Hey guys, I'm Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center and today we're going to take some feedback from uh, one of our uh, subscribers and answer a question about radio calls. We're going to dive into how to make radio calls effectively and I'm going to kind of break that up into two elements. First we're going to talk about what I refer to as the grammar of a radio call and the second is the differences that we would see in controlled uh, airport environments or controlled airspace environments and those radio calls versus in uncontrolled uh, environments. So let's go on ahead and uh, jump into the grammar of a radio call. Okay, so when we think of a radio call, usually there's many different parts and really one of the biggest things that stands out is when we listen to what's happening on the radio, we can sort of hear words, but it's not really structured the same way that we speak the English language. So this is why I refer to this as sort of the grammar of a radio call, because grammatically we don't use the English language, we instead kind of have this uh, shorthand version of the language. And so what I've done is taken an example radio call here where uh, we are trying to come inbound to land at an airport and uh, what I've done is kind of divided the call into three sections. So this is sort of the, the structure of a, of a sentence, if you will, or the structure of a radio call uh, for this purpose. And so it's going to start with this first section which is sort of the, the who, which is who we're talking to and who we are. Uh, so inside of there is, is two parts, right? So the, the who we're talking to, in this case we're calling Georgetown Tower. So that's uh, the, the control tower at an airport that is called Georgetown. And the second part is who we are. So in this case, uh, I'm describing ourselves as Archer12345. So you can think of this as sort of your, your call sign. Uh, the standard way that we obviously identify ourselves is the model of our aircraft and then the, the registration number associated. Uh, there are examples of other types of call signs. For example, at the airlines, uh, pretty much every airline has a, a call sign. So for example, Southwest Airlines calls themselves Southwest and then they have uh, a number, but the number afterwards would be the flight number. Uh, so if uh, the flight from uh, Phoenix to Dallas is flight number uh, 123, then the Southwest flight would be called Southwest flight 123. Uh, but in our case, normally in general aviation, it is uh, in the aircraft uh, model and then the uh, registration number or tail number of the airplane. Good. Next we have this section which is the where. Now what that means is we're going to try to describe our location. So in this case I say that we're 10 miles to the north. Um, so in this case we mean north of the airport because we're calling this this tower. In some cases maybe we'd have to give more specific direction so we're 10 miles north of a certain VOR or if it's a, a a VFR reporting kind of situation. Maybe it's um, five miles west of a lake or a road. Um, and in this case, I don't need to provide my altitude. Once again, though, that could be another way to describe my location is maybe where I'm at uh, geographically and then where I'm also at uh, on, on an altitude plane. Um, last bit here is I just summarize as what And this what portion is describing why we're making this call, really, right? So we, we kind of got through the initial information, who we're talking to, uh, who we are, uh, where we are, and then what is our intention? What are we trying to do? So in this case, I say uh, we're going to be landing, and we have uh, the ATIS information, Bravo, let's say. Uh, good, so this is an example of how this who, where, what kind of grammar or grammatical structure is broken out amongst radio calls. And this really applies to pretty much every kind of radio call that we make. Uh, 
when we break down uh, the differences between controlled uh, experiences and uncontrolled experiences, we'll see that there could be some slight differentiations, but uh, for all intents and purposes, this structure generally works for pretty much all radio calls. Uh, so next, let's take a deeper dive into uh, the differences between a controlled airport environment and the uncontrolled uh, environment. Okay, so now what I want to do is jump into some of the differences in radio calls between controlled environments with ATC and uncontrolled environments. Uh, so to start with, let's talk about operations in controlled environments. This would be true for, for example, operations at an airport that's controlled by a control tower or ground control. Uh, and this would also be true for en route services with an approach control or um, a center control as well. And so generally there's sort of like a sequence to how these radio calls are made. So it starts by us making an initial call or a request. Then we can anticipate that controller uh, replying back with a clearance or an instruction. And then it would end with us making that readback. Uh, a readback is just us confirming that we heard the correct uh, clearance or instruction. So we basically are just repeating that instruction or clearance back to ATC. And then one interesting bit about readbacks is there's a slight change to, to the grammar. So instead of the who, where, what that we had talked about before, it now is that we just simply repeat this clearance or instruction back and then we end the radio call with our call sign, like who we are again. Uh, so that's generally uh, that sequence. Now as you continue on with the same controller, uh, they may come back and give you a new clearance or a new instruction, and then the cycle would repeat. Every time they make a clearance or provide you with a clearance or an instruction, uh, we simply uh, make a readback. If you have an additional request, obviously that would restart this whole cycle over again. All right. Now, let's jump over to uncontrolled operations for a moment. In an uncontrolled environment, uh, such as maybe a practice area or an uncontrolled airport, uh, we do what is known as self-announcing. So self-announcing is a little bit different. Uh, we would basically make the same complete radio call, the who, the where, and the what, every single call, right? Because there's there's nobody that's going to basically reply back to us to give us an instruction or a clearance. So we're just always identifying who we are, where we are, and what is going on to the general traffic in that area. Uh, one thing that is a little bit interesting is we once again make kind of an amendment to the who, where, what uh, grammar. Uh, we now always start and end every call with who that group is that we're talking to. So for example, if we were at an uncontrolled airport uh, called Eagle Airport, uh, then we would start the radio call with Eagle traffic, uh, and then da 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 da, go through the rest of the who and the where and the what, and then we'd end the radio call once again with Eagle traffic. Uh, and this just sort of identifies the beginning and the end uh, of, of our radio call. Uh, now, big piece that is sort of shared by both of these, and it's just related to radio calls in general and sort of the value that they have, right? The, the real value of us effectively communicating on the radio is situational awareness. And what I mean by that is in either scenario, uh, being able to talk on the radio is fine, but listening on the radio is probably more valuable. Right? So being able to listen to what ATC is doing with other aircraft in that area uh, or other aircraft that are self-announcing in the same region as you, that's really what's going to help you uh, with situational awareness. And I, I think that that's critical in, in two parts, right? The situational awareness as far as uh, traffic avoidance, so of avoiding or ensuring your course is uh, avoiding other aircraft. And second, is about sort of anticipation of what will happen next. So for example, uh, if I'm at a controlled airport and I'm listening to ATC talk to some of these other airplanes and I can 
sort of position where they are in the traffic pattern, then I might better be able to understand where I'm going to get sequenced into this traffic pattern. And that just lets me anticipate the radio calls that ATC might give me. Similarly, at an uncontrolled airport, uh, we might be able to identify where other traffic is located. This might help us identify runway in use or uh, once again help us stay or steer clear of some of that traffic. Uh, in either case, I think the situational awareness that effective communications on the radios has is, is really where uh, a lot of that value comes from. So not just talking, but also uh, listening. Very good. All right. So. We've talked a little bit about what I call the grammar of a radio call, uh, as well as the differences between controlled environments and uncontrolled environments. Uh, hopefully that's answered some of your questions related to uh, radio communications. Uh, once again, my name is Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more video content just like this. See you in the next one. Bye.